I'm Dean Safola, and this is the Azure Academy. We've got a cool announcement for you today. So let's go over to the Azure Update page. And in here under Products, let's look for Virtual Machines. And you can see right down here, we've got the Shared Image Gallery now generally available. So what is the shared image gallery and how can that help us? So as part of this migration series, we're talking about how to move data into the cloud. And one of those things that are often considered in these kind of migrations is our custom images. Now, again, we've discussed custom images in the past, and I would encourage you to think, uh, do you really need a custom image? So we've done custom images or thick images for years and years, but management overhead of those is really a high factor. So when it comes to your images, I would encourage you to move to more of a DevOps mindset, go to an image deployment process. But for today, talking about the shared image gallery. So we have images Images, and we have them in the cloud or we have them on-prem and we want to bring them to the cloud, how do we manage them? In the past, some of our concerns have been around how do we do that when we have limitations in Azure, specifically around regions. So we bring a VHD file into the cloud and now we have to replicate this VHD file into all the different regions that we want to use so that we can deploy it. If we have multiple subscriptions, that are in even those same regions, we have to replicate them so that we can again deploy them in our target subscriptions. So if you have two subscriptions and they're both in East US, you've got to still have multiple copies of that image in order to be able to deploy things in East US in both subscriptions. Additionally, we have had the problem of image versioning. So if you have a custom image and you've just put in the patches for the month of May, then when you come into next month, you have the new patches that have to be rolled into the image. So you'll probably end up taking one of those images, hydrating a system from it, installing all of your patches and updates for all your other software and whatever else you have baked in, and then resealing that image, making a new managed image out of it. And now you have to repeat the process again of sending that to all your subscriptions and then all your regions and making sure that your code is now everywhere. So managing that is a problem which the shared image gallery is going to help us solve. So when we deploy a shared image gallery, we're going to just need really one of them. And we're going to deploy that in whatever Azure AD tenant, whatever subscription we want. And then we're going to take our managed image, which again would be a VHD file that we brought into Azure, convert it into a managed image, or we capture it from inside the portal. And we're going to upload that image into the shared image gallery. And we're going to create from it a definition. Now the image definition is going to say uh, how many CPUs and RAM we recommend, when the end of life is for this particular image, but it's also going to create with us a version of the image. Now that version will be stored in a region and the beauty of this is even though that exists in one place for us to then scale to every other region we have to is basically the click of a button. Now when we need to go to the next version say we introduced our patches then we go into the shared image gallery we click add new version from definition it takes all the existing code that we already have in all regions that we want it deployed into and then those images will be duplicated automatically from the shared image gallery however you want to do them in however many iterations of that image per region you want. And the other benefit of the image gallery is how we will be able to share things across multiple Azure AD tenants. We can centrally manage all of our images into one subscription under one AD tenant and then allow access to those image across multiple tenants and then get them deployed to multiple tenant subscriptions, regions, etc., all from one tool. So this is going to make things a lot easier. So let's jump over to the documentation and we'll go under products and then either Windows or Linux VMs, doesn't matter which one. And under the filter, so we search for the word overview and we want to look at the shared images gallery here. And you can also find it under the how to guides, use images, shared image gallery, and we're here at the overview. And this will tell you a little bit more about the product and the things that define it, as well as the requirements around it and limitations. So you can go feel free and read through that. And we're gonna just jump over to the portal and get started. So over here in our portal, I've got a resource group for SIG, which is the shared image gallery, and we'll just hit add. And we'll search for the shared image gallery 
and we'll create that and we'll deploy it to our SIG resource group and we'll just call it shared image gallery and we'll store that in the East US. We'll go to our tags and we'll add a tag for our cost center and then we will create. All right, and there we go. That's finished. So let's go to that new resource. And here's the gallery. So in order for us to do stuff with the gallery, we need some images. So now where do we get images from? So all images start out with a OS disk and some amount of data disks. From there, we take those and make a managed image. And then from that managed image, we'll import that to the shared images gallery. And we create a definition and a version of that image of which we then can deploy VMs or VM scale sets. So let's see how we can do this. We need an image first. So we would take a virtual machine or a virtual hard drive and make a image out of it. So for that, we can open up any virtual machine and that VM can have any number of data disks, whatever it is that that image supports. And once we have the VM prepped, and I'll talk about that in a second. Then we're going to do a capture. So the prep is actually where we would do a sysprep from inside the Windows OS or inside the Linux OS. We run the WA agent command to deprovision and that's going to generalize the system. So once it has been generalized, then we can capture it as an image and redeploy. And that's a requirement for the shared image gallery. So once we have that done, then we're going to come in here and do the create image. And then we give the image a name, store it someplace, and then we can choose whether or not we want to delete the underlying VM that we created it from, which is normally recommended. And then you can choose whether or not you want this image to be zone resilient. In this case, I'm not doing that yet. We'll come back to that later. So I'll cancel this because I've already got some images created. And these are the images that I used in the Windows Virtual Desktop series. Go check that out if you're interested in WVD. And so we've got an image here for Windows 10 and one for Windows Server. And this is Server 2016. And they're both currently stored in East US. So let's open up one of these guys. And you can see there's not a whole lot here, but you do have the resource ID for the base image as well as a button to create a new VM from it. All right, so let's go back to the shared image gallery and let's hit create new image definition. So these fields are not accessible to us because we are creating an image definition in this gallery. So our resource group as well as our location are already set for us as well as the gallery name. So now we need a definition name. So we'll call it WVD Win 10. Now for the publisher offer and SKU, this is underneath every image that you deploy, whether it's a gallery image or now a custom image. So the publisher might be Microsoft or Red Hat. The offer refers to the particular type of image, Windows Server or Windows Client. And then the SKU would be the underlying version. So Windows 10 versus Server 2016. So you can make this whatever you want because these are your images in your gallery. Okay, so I'll be the publisher of MS Azure Academy and my offer is WVD Client and the SKU is Windows 10 and you can do whatever it is that suits you. Now for the versioning, uh, the naming structure for this refers to the version numbers and that's where we have major, minor, and patch. If you don't fill this out correctly, then it'll give you this little red text so that you can name it appropriately. And as a matter of fact, let's call this five since this is the month of May. So major version is one, minor version is zero, and patch version is May. And then this is in the East US, so now we can select our source image and we can see ours here. So another interesting point, if we choose another region where we don't have images, then we won't have anything to select. So if you see this, that's why. Okay, and now exclude from latest refers to whether or not you can use the definition by itself with the latest flag. Meaning that when you deploy an image, you can choose whether or not you want to use the latest version or a specific version. So if we exclude this from latest, you must declare the version. So I'm going to leave this set on no because I want to be able to use the latest. And then you can also set a end of life date for this version. So I'll just set that for the end of the year. And now comes the replication. Now this is where things start to get really cool. So with the replication, we can have multiple copies of the image within a particular region. 
So by default, we're just gonna take one image per region, and then we can add multiple regions down here. And we could pick any regions, so I've just selected a few of them here. And so this would put one copy of the image into all of these different regions. And this is where we can come and add a bunch of customizations to the image. Now the recommendation section right now does not actually do a hard limit. That functionality may be added in the future, but right now these are just recommendations that are going to be a part of the image. So let's fill this out. And then we'll go and add a tag. And let's create that. So inside Windows 10, we've got our configuration, and that's all of our specs that we laid out, as well as the image version. Okay, and inside the image version, we've got an end of life date and an update replication, which is all the different regions and counts of that image that we have per region. So again, if you wanted to add this to multiple uh, other regions, you could do that from here. You just select whatever it is that you're interested in sending it to and what you want the image count to be. Uh, let's say 10 images over there. Now, this brings up a, a good point that I just want you to be aware of. I cannot change the replica count in any of these new regions. Why would that be? Well, it's because I need an image there before I can replicate it. It doesn't make any sense to make 10 replicas and send 10 replicas. So I'm gonna want the replica to exist in that region, and then I can make more replicas. Okay, so just to be aware of that, after you do the push to another region, you will then be able to make more replicas. And now we'll go to share the image across tenants. Let's walk through this process and all the steps that you need here are in the documentation. So let's go over to our Azure AD. And the first thing we need to do is go under app registrations. We're gonna create a new app registration. Now here is where you can choose what kind of accounts you're willing to support. And then we need a URL here. So it could be any URL you want. I'm just gonna put Microsoft.com in here and we'll hit register. Now what we're gonna need is Notepad. And here in Notepad, I've got some stuff that we're gonna to use to track uh, the different bits of info we're gonna to need to make this work. So first we need the application ID of the object we just created. And now we need to go to certificates and secrets. And now we're gonna create a new secret. And then you can set your expiration for whatever you are comfortable with. I'm just gonna leave the default as one year and hit add. And that now has generated for us a secret. So I'll just save this guy for later. Now that that has been done, we need to grant this application that we have created permissions inside the gallery. And go to access control and go to role assignments and then we're going to add a new role, and this will be the reader role, and we'll choose my SIG gallery, and there we go, we've got our reader, and it's at this resource. Now what we need to do is go to a, another tenant where we're gonna grant this access, okay, and here's uh, another AD tenant that I have, and I've already got a SIG test resource group set up here, and here we are in this uh, give tenant to access, and so now what we're gonna do is copy this URL, and we're gonna give that uh, some edits over in our notepad. Now we need to put the tenant two or the destination tenant ID in here. And then we also need our application ID and we'll replace that over here. Just open a browser, paste this in. And now it's asking us to authenticate. In this case, I was in the Azure Academy tenant as my source. My destination is my Microsoft.com tenant. And we are requesting permissions from the MySig gallery in AzureAcademy.com to have permissions in the Microsoft tenant. And we're going to hit accept. So now that that has been accomplished, let's go back to our Microsoft tenant and go to the SIG test, access control, role assignments, and we're gonna add a role assignment. And I'm gonna take my application ID and the role that we're gonna grant is contributor. And then for the uh, principal here, we're just gonna paste our application ID. And there's my MySIG gallery and we'll hit save. Okay, so that part is complete. Now back in the docs, this is the step that we're up to now. So we wanna use the Azure CLI in order to deploy a VM across the tenant from that shared gallery image. And now we're gonna execute these commands in order to be able to build this image in the other region. So we're gonna hit this try it button so we can see our docs right here as well as our command line. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to run this command and now that's gonna force us to log in and we're gonna log in with our service principal and with our secret 
into our source tenant. Okay, and we've got our access token, so that's great. And now we're gonna log on to the target and we'll paste our command. And there's our token, so that's great. And now what we need is to run the command to build the VM in the resource group of sig test. And then we're gonna create it and call it my VM. And the image source is going to be from our other tenant, where our other subscription is, from the sig resource group from the shared images gallery using the server 2016 image version 1.05 and let's build here's our vm and if we look at the export template under the vm and we look under the storage profile we can see here that it is using the shared image gallery reference server 2016 version 1.0.5 so back in the image gallery, back to our server definition, let's create a new version. So let's say 1.0.6, and our source would be the server image, and we'll just create one replica at this point, add our appropriate tags, and create. So I'm capturing now a Linux image that I built and storing that with zone resiliency. And we're gonna take a look at one more feature here of the shared image gallery. Okay, so now I've got my image and that image was stored with zone resiliency enabled, unlike my other images that we've been dealing with so far. So let's go back to the shared image gallery here and let's import a new image. Okay, so we'll call it Linux and put in our standard uh, Publisher, Offer, and SKU, and go to our version here. And this will be version 1.0.0, and our source image is our Linux image, and we'll call end of life uh, the end of this month with one replica. And we'll just take all the defaults on this page, add our tags, and create the image. All right, so that has finished. So back in the gallery now, there's our Linux image. And so from here, we're not gonna see a, a whole lot of difference uh, at this point. And that's because we don't have the in portal uh, portion of the availability zone configuration yet, but that will be coming soon. So what we're gonna do now is open a shell now what we're going to do is create a image version 2.0 based on our Linux source image. We're going to store it in storage standard ZRS so it is a zone redundant copy. And then we're going to make just one replica in the East US. Okay, so that process has finished and as you can see it is stored in ZRS. So if we go back to our versions here and we refresh, now we've got version 2. So if we go to version two and do a VM create. All right, so now we can do zone redundant images within the gallery and this feature will be brought uh, to the portal pretty soon. So keep your eyes open for that. So I hope you've enjoyed this look at the shared images gallery, a way to manage all of your images through the hierarchy of image definitions and versions. And then you can share those images across uh, different users and groups, multiple a Azure AD tenants, as well as replicating that image to multiple regions and multiple instances within a region very easily. And then of course, being able to scale out the performance performance of your deployments by having multiple replica copies. So uh, if you've thought that this video was good, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to click on the subscribe button and the notification icon so you can be aware of when our videos come out, which is roughly once a week. Give us a comment below. Let us know what you thought of this or any other features you'd like to see added to the shared image gallery. And we'll see you in the next video. Happy learning.